So here I am in my shop making my first video of my Tormark PCNC machine that I have had for oh five or six months now. And uh, what I've got in the machine is a job that is, I would call it my first production type job where I'll be making a, at least a few hundred pieces of a particular part for someone. Got the fourth axis on there. I have the tilting fourth axis. It's a nice flexibility to have. And the material I'm cutting is actually a plastic, and uh, it's called Ertalon. The uh, tools that I'm using, I've just got five tools that are uh, being used in the machine an end mill, a smaller end mill, a chamfer mill, a drill, and I've got a thread hob in the spindle right now. So I'm just going to uh, talk through my process a little bit, just for the fun of it. On the A-axis, I've got four parts that come off complete at each cycle run. These four parts here are actually done and ready to be removed. The first operation that occurs, actually, is where I do the first half of the part. I put in the raw stock, and I clamp them in, and that side is run. And then I move those parts over to the other side and put them on here and put some new blanks on the first side. So I'll change these out and uh, we'll watch the machine run. Okay, so I've got new parts loaded in. Uh, the parts that were on the first operation are now here on the second operation. And I've got some new blanks in on the first side. I've got tool number one in the spindle, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, start up the machine. All right. like I might have wound the A-axis up a couple of times while I was doing some other things, so it's going all the way back around to find A0 right now. tornado milling down or ramping down as it cuts around the part. I was a little concerned that the parts could pull out of the fixture, so to minimize tool pressure, I just took this approach, uh, the roughing. So here's the last part, finishing up on a finish pass, and then we'll see the A-axis will roll around, and we'll cut on the other side to finish the overall length of the uh, of the finished part. There's no tool changer on this machine. Uh, I did invest in the pneumatic power draw bar, which I'm very happy with. Uh, but in order to minimize how many times I needed to change the tool, just trying to make sure everything I need to do with, say, one tool like that half inch end mill, that I do it uh, by rotating the A-axis and not by changing the tool out repeatedly. So that's one of the ways that this machine, even without a tool changer, can become a little more automated. It seemed like a good time to show off my pneumatic power tool changer. Push of a button, I take out one tool. Very important that I put in the right tool after that. And then I hit the cycle start button. This 
is a 1 8 inch mill, cutting a slot at 5 eighths of an inch deep. We'll do that four times. Maybe this is a good time to show you what I'm actually making. Maybe not. Maybe I should get the phone. Okay, so I got a phone call and I got interrupted. Uh, but anyway, this is the part that I'm making. It's black. Ertalon is the name of the plastic. It's it's a plastic that has a good stiffness. Uh, you know, it's kind of important for the quarter twenty thread that's on the bottom of the part. Oh, that one's full of holes. Um, and this can be screwed right onto a tripod. This this is uh, this is a part that's used uh, by some guys that make uh, their own panel boxes. I guess they're called uh, in in radio building equipment. So, and those are some white nylon screws that I bought and installed. And it just helps. To, it's kind of like a little miniature vise. Here's a chamfering tool. <clears throat> it's gonna just do a lot of edge breaking. Pre-drill for a 632 cut tap. Okay, and our last tool to be run is our carbide thread hob. What that's going to do is uh, drop down in the hole and cut a helical angle, you know, a helical circle that goes around and up, generating the screw thread at the right pitch for that screw. that a little better if I shut the coolant off. There's another set of four pieces that are done. Cycle time right now is 
a little over 30 minutes for four pieces. Um, I'll improve on that, but for now I'm just happy to be running. So I'll make some more videos when we do something cool again. Thanks. So the last thing I wanted to show you was the software that I'm using to program my mill. And this is a software tool called SprutCam, which was recommended by, and I bought it through Tormach. And uh, as you can see here, I've got, um, you know, a 3D representation on this screen of what's going on out in the mill. And, uh, you know, so I program it. I, I built these models in a software tool called Alibre, another tool that was uh, recommended by Tormach. And, uh, you know, so with this I can go ahead and I can run a simulator which pretty much does here what you see going on out there. And uh, a little faster, of course. I can speed it up a bit. A little hard on the eyeballs, but you get the idea that, uh, you know, so that's kind of the complete